The relationship between Keir Starmer and Nicola Sturgeon is getting worse as we get closer to a potential early general election. Oh dear, things don't look too good for Nicola Sturgeon's SNP for a long time in this country because of the system that we have. We have way too many left-wing parties, they've been splitting each other's votes and they would require each other's support to be in power, sometimes coalition, sometimes supply confidence nonsense. That's what the SNP are doing with the Scottish Greens in Scotland. But this morning, Nicola Sturgeon has showed, indicated her sadness and a disappointment in Keir Starmer because he doesn't seem to be needing the SNP anymore. And what about Keir Starmer, friend or foe? I work very well with Keir Starmer over Brexit. I'm really disappointed that Keir Starmer um, has thrown in the towel on uh, the European Union and no longer wants to take the UK or Scotland back into the and European Union. Like it's interesting that for a long time recently, um, Sturgeon's main platform was no longer for the UK to rejoin the European Union. She's been basically saying, all I care about is for Scotland to rejoin the European Union. Why does she care if... Uh, Keir Starmer wants the UK to rejoin or not. If you're really confident that you're going to get your independence, or as I say, isolation, and you're confident that once Scotland is isolated as a country, then it can rejoin, then why are you so upset and so disappointed at Starmer? Maybe, maybe it's because that st that people like Starmer and the Labour Party is not really cr no credit to Starmer, by the way. It's nothing to do with that. It's because the Conservatives have done so badly in the opinion polls that the Labour Party are going up massively. They don't really need to beg the SNP for any sort of backing. So she doesn't really... She prefers the Labour to Tories, but she's criticising Starmer's rule. So, and we've known that because when recently, yesterday actually, Starmer came back again to reject Nicola Sturgeon's plans for Scottish independence referendum. Now I know that obviously we're not really left-wing people. You know, we, we are sound people. We always say, well, of course he's going to have to say that. He's probably lying. But logic says, if he doesn't need to be desperate, he actually it would be right to reject it. And he would probably just reject it. He's not going to randomly give a referendum to the SNP if he doesn't need their support. And that's what's happening now. And that's why uh, when you've seen that uh, the support for Starmer is going up so much... <laughs> That is, he's actually beating Nicola Sturgeon in popularity ratings. First things first, the state of the country is absolutely embarrassing now that not only Starmer is more popular than the Tories, he's actually become more popular than Sturgeon in Scotland. Oh, I mean, not that Sturgeon is any such a good leader, absolutely not. But St Starmer, Starmer's become more popular. <laughs> I've, I've got Greek yogurt in the fridge that's more popular. But that is so embarrassing. Um, by the way, when we say Starmer and Labour are becoming popular, it's, it's, that's not really the case. It's basically the Tories and the Conservative government are becoming so unpopular, by default, the balance is completely messed up now. People are withdrawing the support from the Tories. They're not going for Labour. It's anti-Tory. That's the reality. And when the, when the election comes, we'll see the actual vote because there will be a number of people who would actually vote for reform. Uh, party, for example, and some other parties, some more left-wingers will vote for the Green Party. Someone, there will be four people who vote for the Liberal Democrats, as usual, so that's absolutely fine. Well done, Lib Dems, for having four votes. But that's the state of the country, and Nicola Sturgeon is not too happy about what's going on. But we're going to come back in half an hour. We're going to tell you about Qatar. Let's talk about the World Cup in Qatar, the, the beacon of human rights, <laughs> who's going to be in a bit of a trouble because a number of football players and uh, teams have been urged to boycott it, but one country is doing something really, really odd, and that country is Denmark. Subscribe to the channel on my 2 and we are the media.